A few days ago, I had a long conversation. It was a very interesting conversation with a young man who is a former parishioner of mine. After his squandered first year at university, he had occasion to visit some family members in the southern USA. They are strong Baptists and encouraged him to go to church for that period of his extended stay. These church experiences and living with this family were a real revelation to him. After experiencing young people who were serious about their Christian faith, he decided to visit other family members, this time in Singapore. Again, through these Baptist relatives, he encountered young people who are alive with the missionary zeal, who motivated my young Catholic friend to enroll in a course expounding the fundamentals of the Christian faith. To make a very long story short, after a year away, he is currently back home discerning whether he should sign up for a five-year missionary stint with this group in Singapore. I listened attentively and respectfully to his conversion story. His mother, understandably, is nervous about her son planning to be away from home for such an extended period of time. I tried in my own way to affirm the good things that I heard him saying. This story dovetails perfectly with today's gospel. Today's gospel describes the commissioning of the 12 apostles sent out with power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. They exercise their preaching and healing mission according to the action plan given to them by Jesus. By his instructions, it is clear that Jesus meant his disciples to take no supplies for the road. They were simply to trust that God, the provider, would open the hearts of believers to take care of their needs. Jesus' instructions also just suggest that his disciples should not be like the acquisitive priests of his day who were interested only in monetary gain. They should be walking examples of God's love and providence. Now, the Jews supported their rabbis and judged doing so a privilege as well as an obligation because hospitality was an important religious tradition in Palestine. The apostles should choose temporary accommodations in a reputable household. They should bless the residents with God's peace and they should be satisfied with the food and accommodation they received without searching out better accommodation. The young missionaries which my friend encountered in Singapore seemed to have taken Jesus' instructions and travel tips to heart. They did what they did for the love of the Lord and not for a salary. They step out in faith, trusting that the Lord will provide for their needs by touching the hearts of those people that they are evangelizing. And finally, these young missionaries witness to their Christian faith by working with children, helping to build schools, staffing, soup kitchens, etc., in a particular village, and then they move on to another village. Somehow, sadly, Many young people who attend our parishes and our Catholic schools haven't heard that each baptized person is called to be a missionary. I don't think they haven't heard. It just hasn't registered. The penny hasn't dropped. They haven't incorporated it. They haven't included it in their understanding of self. Each Christian is called not only to be a disciple, but also an apostle. As apostles, we are sent out to evangelize the world by sharing with others, not just words or ideas or doctrines, but our experience of God and his incarnate son, Jesus. It is through our transparent Christian lives 
that we are to show the love, the mercy, the concern of Jesus to the people around us. And secondly, baptized Christians, we have a liberating mission. There are many demons which can control the lives of the people around us, making them helpless slaves. The demon of nicotine, the demon of alcohol, the demon of gambling, the demon of pornography, the demon of promiscuous sex, the demon of materialism, the demon of consumerism. We need the help of Jesus to be liberated from these demons ourselves, and then in turn, to help Jesus liberate others from their bondages. Please God, through prayer and study, we do so. We now bring to the altar of God some of the prayers and intentions we'd like to remember in this Eucharist. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, May his shepherding of the church bring renewal in places where the practice of the faith once thrived but is now dying out. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those in civil authority, may they work for social justice, equality amongst all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those suffering from the various modern addictions, May they find in Christ the hope and courage to begin the process of recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those who are gathered here today, but also those who are watching on TV, may we all experience peace in our hearts. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For us, may the life of our 20th century Saint Padre Pio, whom the Church honors today, Help us see Christ in the suffering of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for all Christian missionaries, priests, religious men and women, and lay people. May they experience safety and support as they strive to bring the incarnate love of God to those who have not heard the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and we pray especially for the intentions of those who are sponsoring this particular televised Mass. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father of all, we come to you in faith and hope. Hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. And we make these prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash me from my sinfulness. Make me worthy to enter and truly celebrate these sacred mysteries of your great love for all of God's people. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Father of mercy, we have these gifts to honor in honor of your Saint Padre Pio, who bore witness to your mighty power. May the power of the Eucharist bring us your salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 